Hey, when you first look at the keto diet, it seems pretty cut and dry. You're just cutting out the carbohydrates, cutting out the sugar, and everything else is fair game. But that leaves a lot to be desired when it comes down to all the different sweeteners that are out there. This day and age, we have so many different artificial and natural sweeteners, and it's just really hard to tell what's gonna kick you out of keto, what's gonna actually be approved for keto, and what is not approved for keto. So I've got a nice list of all the sweeteners that you will typically see, and we're gonna go on down the list. I'm gonna give them either a red X or a green check, and then we're gonna discuss some of the science behind them and why they're approved and why they're not approved. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We've got new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time for our standard programming. And then we have videos coming out the rest of the week as well to give you additional content so that you can always know the ropes of whatever protocol you're following. All right, so let's get right into the science here. We're gonna go right on down the list. So I'm gonna start with aspartame or aspartame. Depending on where in the country you are, you might call it one or the other. So aspartame is typically what you will see in Diet Coke or what you'll see in some sugar-free candies. It's, it's probably the most popular artificial sweetener that's out there right now. And the fact of the matter is, as much as I hate the stuff because it pretty much is poison, it's not gonna kick you out of keto. You see, it's very, very synthetic in the sense that it doesn't trigger an insulin response and it ends up being something that technically is okay on keto. So I'm going to give it a reluctant green check mark I'm not happy about that, but the fact is, is that it's not gonna kick you out of keto. Is it safe for your long-term health? No, it's not, point blank, but it's not gonna kick you out of keto because there's not a strong insulin response. Okay, the next one I wanna talk about is another one that's pretty obvious, okay? This is sucrose. Sucrose is good old-fashioned table sugar, okay? Regular sugar. Of course, that's not gonna be allowed on keto. Let's just go ahead and get this one out of the way, just because someone would bring it up in the comment section regardless. So, nope, sucrose is not good to go, but, what about sucralose? You see, sucralose, also known as Splenda, is one of the most common sweeteners that's used on a keto diet. And it's kind of a gray area, so we have to kind of break some things down a little bit. You see, sucralose, it's not quite as simple as it seems, because if you get a packet of sucralose or a packet of Splenda, it usually has maltodextrin added to it. Now, the maltodextrin can trigger an insulin response. So therefore, if you're loading up on sucralose via the little packets, then you're probably gonna end up triggering an insulin response and kick yourself out of keto. The other thing that we have to be cognizant of is what's called the excitotoxin response. So whenever you're dealing with aspartame or sucralose or saccharin or any of these really super sweet sweeteners, you have an excitotoxin response. Okay, what that means is that it triggers a glutamate response in your brain, basically from what's called aspartate. So it triggers the brain to go hyperactive. This can be very, very taxing to your brain, but it can also trigger the pancreas to do some different things. Now, a lot of this is still under investigation. Scientists are trying to figure out whether just having something sweet in the first place can actually trigger an insulin response or not. But anyway, that's a story for a different day. So the point is, sucralose in packets should be avoided. Okay, if you get sucralose that's in a product, Sure, sucralose isn't exactly good for you, but it shouldn't kick you out of keto if it doesn't have the maltodextrin attached to it. I will say though, sucralose has been shown to kill off a good portion of our gut bacteria, which can, in fact, affect your ketogenic lifestyle. So again, it's kind of a reluctant green check mark. I just say be careful with it. So I'm gonna actually also give it a, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a X too, okay? Just because it is that gray area. So just be careful with that one. Okay, the next one is honey, and this is an interesting one because people often ask if they can consume honey simply A, because it's natural, but B, because it's a lower sugar content than say like sucrose. Well, the fact of the matter is that honey is fructose, and it's a very sweet fructose. And fructose is processed differently in the body. So fructose travels through what is called the active transport chain. So basically, instead of going through the normal digestion process and the normal absorption process, honey and fructose gets an expedited delivery to the liver, which means that when you have too much honey, it's very, very easy for that to get converted into fat, and it happens super, super fast. So yeah, honey will kick you out of keto, but more importantly, honey's gonna get converted into fat a lot easier, so we just have to be really, really careful there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say no-go on the honey, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit here. So the next one I wanna talk about is an interesting one. Okay, it's monk fruit. Now, monk fruit came to light not that long ago in terms of the mainstream. So as far as a keto sweetener, we really started seeing monk fruit on the scene maybe two, three years ago. But just in the last year, it started to gain a ton of popularity. So monk fruit is a resounding yes. Monk fruit is definitely good to go. And I actually wrote some notes down when it comes down to monk fruit. So the thing with monk fruit is, 
it's built up of what is called mogrosides. So mogrosides are also very powerful antioxidants in the body. So not only are you getting a sweetener, you're getting something that is sweetened with literally an antioxidant. So any of the sort of toxin effect that you would have, or even the excitotoxin effect, is actually reduced because you have an antioxidant property. So when we look at like aspartame and sucralose, you're having this heightened, heightened excitotoxin response in the brain that literally is toxic and causing free radicals in the brain. When you're literally sweetening something with an antioxidant, even if you did have an excitotoxin effect, you're somewhat counteracting those free radicals because of the fact that it's an antioxidant to begin with. So that's very, very powerful. But the other thing with monk fruit, dramatic changes in the reduction of what is called nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, this is the main driver for inflammation in the body, but also reductions in interleukin-6, but even cooler, reductions in what is called the cyclooxygenase enzyme 2. Okay, now if you take an aspirin, you are reducing cyclooxygenase enzyme 1 and 2. Okay, that's how you reduce inflammation. But the thing is, we don't want to reduce cyclooxygenase enzyme 1 because that's what protects the gut lining. That's why you always hear when you take ibuprofen or aspirin to do it in moderation because you'll get a bleeding ulcer. Your stomach will bleed because you're reducing the inflammation that protects your gut. Well, monk fruit is so cool because it reduces only cyclooxygenase enzyme 2, not COX1. So that is why monk fruit is probably my favorite sweetener of all. And because I love monk fruit and because you love monk fruit too, I want to go ahead and offer everyone that's watching this video a special discount on Lakanto monk fruit. So not only do they have pure monk fruit and also a couple variations of monk fruit and erythritol, they also have chocolate now. So we're literally talking monk fruit sweetened chocolate that is totally keto friendly. So for everyone that's watching this video, if you look down in the description, you can get your hands on some of this monk fruit that is totally awesome and at a reduced price from what you'd ordinarily see in a grocery store. Because Lakanto is all over the world. You're gonna see them in Whole Foods, you're gonna see them in Sprouts, you're gonna see them at grocery stores, but you're not gonna be able to get the price that you get here on my channel. So go ahead and check them out after this video and get your hands on some of the monk fruit sweetener and some chocolate. All right, now it leads me into the next one, which is stevia. Okay, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm also a stevia fan. But there's some things that we have to consider with stevia, and some of it is newer research. So if you go back through the crypts of all my videos, you're gonna see that I was touting the benefits of stevia and monk fruit almost exclusively. Okay, a lot of benefits with stevia, but we have to look at a couple things too. I am gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna give it a green check mark right out the gate so you don't think that I'm gonna throw you a curveball. It is good to go. I just wanna break some stuff down for you. Okay, so stevia might produce insulin. Okay, there's some effects that occur that might trigger the pancreas to secrete a little bit of insulin through its beta cells. Okay, now it's not anything super significant. It's not like what you would get with another sweetener or anything like that, but it's still something to be cognizant of. And I like to bring you always up to speed with whatever kind of research is out there right now. So scientists are looking into that. But one of the cool benefits of stevia is that it does increase sodium excretion. So if you're feeling puffy or you're feeling like you're holding extra water, actually a little bit of stevia can encourage the kidneys to expel sodium, causing you to drop that extra water weight. So it's actually a really cool trick. So that's one of the reasons why I like stevia. It's definitely got some powerful effects in there. All right, now let's go back to agave for a second. This one comes up a lot. People think because agave is so low glycemic that it's gonna be good to go. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not, okay? Agave is a no-go. And the reason that agave is a no-go is simply because of this. I wrote it down here. So even though it's only a nine or a 10 on the glycemic index scale, the processing that agave goes through to actually make it sweet ends up leaving it at over 80% fructose. Remember what I talked about with the honey, how the fructose goes straight to de novo lipogenesis almost exclusively, like it goes through the body and then whatever isn't immediately used is converted to fat? Well, agave is the same way. Plus, we have so much additional processing that's going into place. Definitely not something you wanna use on keto or not on keto for that matter, okay? Now, high fructose corn syrup. The reason I put it on here it's probably pretty obvious that you're not gonna drink a soda when you're on a keto diet. Okay, but high fructose corn syrup is a huge no-no, and the reason I put it on there is just because it's a great explanation after talking about agave and honey. High fructose corn syrup is literally a concentrated form of fructose. So when you look at honey, agave, high fructose corn syrup is super concentrated fructose. So the likelihood of that turning to fat is like crazy, crazy high. Okay, now the big one that comes up a lot of times, I see so many comments talking about erythritol, and we see, it, it confuses the heck out of us, because when you look on a label, a lot of times you'll see carbohydrates listed, but then when you actually look down below those carbohydrates, you see that it says sugar alcohols, or it says erythritol, X amount of grams. So you're like, wait a minute, do I count this or not? 
So it's kind of a gray area, but with erythritol as a sugar alcohol, you're good to go. Erythritol is actually pretty cool stuff. It is derived from plants. It's not like it's a chemical. The thing that's confusing with erythritol is it's such a chemical sounding name. It throws people off. And erythritol is just a plant fiber. So it's actually pretty straightforward. And I wrote some notes down on erythritol because the thing you have to be aware of, especially if you're checking out the Lakanto stuff I talked about, they do use some erythritol in mix with their monk fruit, but it's not just because they're trying to cut it down, they actually have some obvious reason to it, and I'll explain it here. So 90% of the sugar alcohols that you get from erythritol are absorbed before the bowel. Okay, why is that important? Well, normally if you have sugar alcohols like isomalt or maltitol or anything like that, you're gonna get super bloated. And quite honestly, you're probably gonna get diarrhea. It's pretty common. You don't have to have too much to even have that effect. So the cool thing is erythritol usually doesn't mess up your stomach unless you're having a ton of it. And the reason is because it's absorbed before it goes into the bowel. This is really cool for sugar alcohol. Passive diffusion is what happens with sugar alcohols. Water gets drawn into the colon or drawn in wherever this erythritol would be. But in the case of erythritol, since it's getting drawn in before the bowel, the bloating doesn't really occur because it's not getting stuck in your small intestine or your large intestine. It happens in your stomach, everything just kind of occurs, processing continues. The other thing that's really cool, and this isn't talked about in research journals a lot, is it's not overly sweet, okay? So when it comes down to erythritol, it's 0.7 times as sweet as sugar. So it's not quite as sweet as sugar. It's 70% of the way there which means that when you consume it and a little bit hits your tongue, you're not having this crazy excitotoxin response. Because like this, we're talking two to three, sometimes 185 times sweeter than sugar, literally. That's gonna trigger your brain to have a pretty profound effect as far as the excitotoxins are concerned. So basically, your brain says, this is super sweet, it gets super excited, and it triggers all kinds of inflammatory responses. It's a fact, it's true, it's real, it's legit. With erythritol, that doesn't happen as much because it's not as sweet of a concentration. So we're actually getting a fiber benefit more so than just a sweet benefit. Uh, that's what makes it superior to other sugar alcohols. So that's definitely a good to go one. Monk fruit and erythritol combined are a great mix exactly like you can get in Lakanto as well. So which brings me to the next one, which is isomalt. The reason I put in this one is simply because if you look at a lot of like the Russell Stover candies and some of the, the diabetic candies, a lot of times they're sweetened with isomalt. Isomalt is some sketchy stuff. Um, I would go so far as saying, yeah, it's probably keto friendly, but some sugar alcohols do trigger insulin responses. Okay, they actually can ferment in your gut and they can throw off your gut bacteria pretty wildly. So I'm gonna go for the sake of this video and I'm gonna say steer clear of isomalt and maltitol whenever possible. You'll definitely feel a little bit kind of bloated and woozy when you consume it too. It's definitely one of those that is very notorious to cause a laxative effect. In fact, most candies that are sweetened with isomalt flat out say if you consume more than X amount, you will have a laxative effect. So stay near a toilet. Okay, the next one is glycerol. This is a super interesting one. Glycerol and glycerin technically is not a carb or a fat. It's neither, it's not a protein either. It's its own macronutrient. So glycerol is used as a natural sweetener, but it has a very unique thing. It's very, very hydrophilic, which means wherever glycerol goes, water follows. So if you consume something that's sweetened with glycerol, it's pretty cool, because it gets into your intracellular and extracellular space and draws water there. So it's a really good way to get hydrated, but it has zero glycemic effect. So zero blood sugar response, zero insulin response, and it's processed entirely differently than any of these other ones. So People get thrown off because it has calories in it. And then they get thrown off because it technically has fat and it technically has carbs. Why? Because it has those hydrogen molecules. It has the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen to make up a carbohydrate, to make up a fat. But it's its own macronutrient. And it's really wild. And I've done some videos talking specifically about glycerol. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell you that glycerol is okay. And glycerol kind of gives you like a syrupy like texture. So you could always use glycerol and some yogurt and things like that. So this pretty much sums up most of the sweeteners that you will see out there. Now, obviously, you're probably gonna come up with some other ones. There's some other like um, apple-derived ones like dolcetti. There's some other ones that are derived from uh, pineapple and some other fruits. And we can break those down too, but the fact is usually when they're concentrated forms of fructose in any way, even if they say they're low glycemic, they're so concentrated through processing that it's probably not good to consume them because it can kick you out of keto. So stick with the ones that have the green check mark, okay? Use a little bit of caution with stevia, and oh, one more thing to add with the stevia, try to go for the liquid form whenever possible because the powdered forms of stevia oftentimes still have the maltodextrin added to it, 
just like you would find in the case of sucralose and aspartame and all that stuff. And guys, please, please, please do this channel a solid and make sure you check out Lakanto down below in the description. Obviously, they're a big sponsor of this video, but they're also a product that I use in my house all the time. So I wanna make sure you check them out. As always, keep it locked in here on this video. And if you have ideas for future videos, make sure you put them in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one.